join me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we ask right now for your presence. We call upon you, Lord, King. We ask right now that you would receive this worship, God. We look to you, Father God. We look to your gift, your goodness, your kindness, your graciousness, Father. It radiates, Father. I pray that you would just come down, Father, right now. We call upon you, Lord. Come to your temple right now. Come to your place, Father God. Receive this worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship.
You're the God of this city. You're the King of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. Is no one like your God? There is no one like your God. The greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Jesus, you are Lord. You are life. May you fill this place with our worship, O oh God. May you be pleased. May you be honored and glorified. We love you, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With that same agape love, would you turn to your neighbors and give some love to your people right next to you?
Aloha. Welcome to Kalihi Union Church, where we are so glad you are here to honor the Lord as one family. We are so grateful that we can celebrate life together, and life is a journey together. If you are a guest or a visitor, we welcome you this day into our ohana. And so if there is family or friends who would like to recognize you, now would be an appropriate time. Pastor Brad. Hi, I'd like to introduce my brother-in-law, Charles, as um, my sister's husband, visiting from Seattle, first Welcome time class. here. Welcome, Charles. And Wendy Kamimura. Wendy Kamimura, retired. Friday. Friday. Hawaii, USA, Federal Credit Union. How many years, Wendy? How many years were you working? Um, the industry, which is credit unions, over about 40 years. <laughs> wow. wow. You, Amazing. One more, yes. I forgot Grandma Ikeda, who most of you know, is back. She went to Joy Fellowship on Thursday, and please make sure that you say hi to her. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Well, we have lots of things going on, and so we want to highlight some of the things in which we need each of us being connected. And we had an exciting time going out to this community. This very song, I was just reflecting on there are greater things that God wants to do in Kalihi. And so on Friday and Saturday, this past Friday, Saturday, we passed out flyers. We did a prayer walk with people. In fact, one group that was praying with some people, there was a lady and the leader just said, I feel prompted to pray for you. And she said, I have some things going on with my legs. And they prayed for her. And when she got up, she was healed. She can move around. And so the very name of Ho'ola, which means healing or um, salvation or life, was being fulfilled as we're passing out flyers and praying already. Yeah. And so we need you. We need you to pray because God will do an amazing thing in Kalihi. And we want to be a part of that. We have two more days to pass out flyers and pray. And so next Friday from 4 to 6 yeah. and next Saturday from... 9, 9 to 11. To 11. Yeah. We'd love for you to join a team and be a and part when, of this. Whenever you drive by that clinic, pray. pray. Okay, pray and you, you can join us. And we're going to be hearing more about that in a few minutes. But yeah, it's praise God. Praise God. And can, can we do my mom's thing? Yeah. Is that okay? So for those of you who don't know, Pastor Jonathan's father was a senior pastor here at one time. And his mother. Two times. <laughs> Two times, yes. <laughs> Pastor Jonathan's mother's birthday is coming up on the 28th. Yeah, they have, they, they have prayed for this church every week um, since 1957. And they, they call, and, they, and many of you know them. Um, so this is mom's 90th birthday. All my family is flying from all over the place to be there. And so we have um, cards at the back. You can just write by letters. You can write big so she can read it if you have a note for her, those of you that knew her. But can we just do like a, a, a 10 second uh, video for her yeah. where we say, and, and Psalm 90, because I always look to the Psalm of the year, it says, Lord, you've been our dwelling place. Can we say that? Lord, you have been our dwelling place. Through all generations. Through generation to generation. Oh, te sorry. Thank you, guys. You're way ahead of me. Let's try it again. Different translation. Try it together. Lord, Lord you have been our dwelling place. Our dwelling place. From generation, generation to generation. generation. So we're going to say that on the video, and then we're going to say, Happy birthday, Libby. Okay? Libby's her name. Oh, wow. You guys are amazing. <laughs> okay. All right. So can we stand and do that? All right? And then, and then we'll do this as a, as a gift to my mom and as an aloha from us to them. All right. Ready? Lord, you have been our dwelling place from generation to generation. Happy birthday, Libby. Aloha. <laughs> Love you, Mom. Thanks. You may be seated. Really appreciate that. I don't think there is a, a week where she doesn't say, John, give my love to our brothers and sisters at Kalihi Union. People literally around the world pray for us, and what a privilege to have that prayer support and, and as we move forward in the area of mission. Now, we're, we're growing older. But we're also together growing, growing young. younger. Sure. Yeah, we're growing <laughs> yes. young. Yeah. Yes, we are. And so what this is, it's going to take a year to maybe two years, but we're at the start of this Growing Young campaign. And the purpose of it 
is for us as a church. I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah, it's, it's if I'm excited about Kali, I'm super excited about this one. <laughs> yeah, it's, this it's, one yeah. is about our church, Kalihi Union Church, being involved in young people yeah. in their lives, relationally. And as a church, I could just see it, each of us being a part of young people growing in this church. So what we're doing as step one, this one step, that's all we need you to do. Thank you, yes is to take a survey. This is done by the Fuller Youth Institute, yeah. and it's online. And so the complications of that is some of you may not know computer skills or computer, you're not computer savvy, but we have young people to help you with the survey. And we need to do it online because they collect the data and they formulate their information through that. So it's very important that you go online, take this survey, and just be as honest and, and real. And so, so you can find the link on our church website. Yep. It's also and in the flyer. It's also in the flyer, Growing Young. And then the next three, four weeks, you'll be seeing big monitors in the lanai. Uh, we're just breaking in slowly. And so if you haven't done it, just to remind you, you can do it here online and you can get it rolling. Oh, but right. but we're, we're, we're taking a snapshot of our culture so that we can move forward and that the Lord can use us. Going to be using this in the fall, using it in a year from now and all the way through. This is actually really, really exciting stuff. Super. Yeah, the first to hear. First, <laughs> exciting. We want to invite the forays to come on up. Yeah. This is the forays last Sunday with us. And as they're coming up, you guys can come up. As they're coming up, just another reminder that summer fun early bird registration is this Monday, tomorrow. And so please make sure if you have children or grandchildren, sign up for the early bird summer fun registration. That's going to be tomorrow. Right. Foray family has Thank been you. with us for the past three years serving the Lord. And we are so grateful for each of them. And so, Pastor Jonathan, can Back you share? Then, yeah, I mean, this is Din Hughes. They say the measure, the success of a church is not by who comes, but who you send out. And we're sending out our best. And we are just so, so grateful to the Lord for you. Randina, I was going to ask you to sing today. <laughs> she doesn't know this. But just in talking with your mom and just, just the, the heart of Jesus that is in, in your family and, and there's all these hidden depths of blessing all the way through each one and each one of them have served. Each one of them has had, a, I don't mean just a little, has had a meaningful, meaningful ministry. And, and Jake, yesterday when you handed off the command, the change of command, um, I mean, this, this man is commander, was a commander of one of our key warships and a submarine and, uh, and a huge responsibility. And yet stood before the admiral and stood before all of his crew and everyone else. And he says that the Lord Jesus is the center of my life. And then he introduced his, his family and his family that was visiting. And then he introduced his church family. And, and we want you to know you are our ahana. And when you go to the Pentagon, whatever levels of service you have and as a family you share, because it very much is a family, we're with you and we love you. And we are so grateful for your service to Jesus and your service to our country. And thank you so, so much. We love you guys. We have, we have some presents and then we're going to pray. And uh, what up? And this says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. <laughs> and let us come with the ladies. Anna. Thank you. And we are going to pray. Could we stand? We want to bless them. And some of you that are, that are close may want to come up and surround them. And just come on up. And my wife's going to. Oh, do you want to explain your present or no? No, okay. This is a homemade <laughs> present. She was sewing. And uh, we just want to lift our hands and bless them as we send them out in the power of the Lord. Trish is going to pray for the children, and then I'm going to pray for Jake and Randina. So, Father, we come in one accord, and I just come with uh, Joshua 1.9 for the children, where you say, Have not I commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. 
And so, Father, I thank you for the image of Jesus that is stamped on each of the children's hearts. And I look forward to seeing how you use them in Virginia, Washington. Father, I pray that uh, they will know that you go before them on that first day of school, that you go before them. Uh, when they move into their new house, that you go before them to their bedroom, uh, to their neighbors. Uh, Father, for the old friendships they have, that you go before them. And for the new friendships they're going to make that will be very dear to them, we just thank you, Father, that you go before them. So, Lord, we pray your blessing on each of them, and we just thank you, Father, that we were able to share time with them these past few years. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up Jake and Landina. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for them. Bless their marriage. Lord, when they're together, let you be right there in their midst. Lord, when they're apart, let you be right there binding them together. Lord, one heart, one mind. Hearts and lives yielded to you. Father, thank you for your miracles in Randina's body. And Father, continue to pour out life and healing and strength for her. And Father, may they see the power of your Holy Spirit at work. As, Lord, they share Christ, Lord, they show Christ, Lord, as they open up their homes and their lives to other people, Lord, use their testimony and the blessing of this family. Lord, we send them with aloha. We send them with tears and we send them with joy. But we send them with great thanksgiving that we have had this time. And, Lord, that we share eternity together in Christ. Amen. We praise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you to the 4A family. Um, can we just show the picture of our newest addition? Yes, and so speaking of family, we also have a new addition to our family. Uh, Romina gave birth to her second child, Oriel. Eaton. Oriella, yeah. And, we are, and there's grandma and great grandma and brother and father and Romina, it's a mother. Praise, in fact, that's four generations I know, what of a women. Sweetheart that's kind of cool. I know. Yeah. Just didn't want to let her go. Praise the Lord. One of, is Dr. Bob. Yep. Can you come up, Dr. Bob? Dr. Bob is one of the key doctors at Ho'ola, and we need to pray for him as well. They open tomorrow. So Ho'ola Clinic opens tomorrow. Their grand opening is on the 21st. Join us for the 21st in celebrating and praying and covering that. Uh, but Dr. Bob, this, could the, this is missions month, okay? And I mean, we do missions all the time, but it, it's not, um, I believe, coincidence. It's the hand of God that tomorrow, and maybe Dr. Bob, you could just tell us a couple of things about the clinic. It opens, and how we can pray, and just a little bit about the hand of the Lord to this point. I know that that's that's tough, but just just bump us on some highlights. Well, thank you as a church. This is my new church home, by the way. Amen. <laughs> I love this guy right here and all of you. Yeah, I, I, the minute I came here the first time, I knew. <laughs> anyway, because of your support and the support of other churches, we've been able to pull this off in record time. Uh, two miracles just in the last couple days to show you the hand of God. One, we had an inspection from the biggest insurance company, and uh, we were all nervous because we, we didn't even have our supplies arrive until Wednesday. So we had to get them all in order, clean the place up. We had the inspection, and they said, I said, so what did we do wrong? What's the mistakes? What do we got to fix? They said, we've never seen an inspection where everything was in order the way you did. <laughs> Amen. Then the hand of God took a nurse from Colorado who wants to go to Iraq with us in the days when we finally get to go there again. And she came to join our team, moved here four days ago, but didn't have her license yet to practice. So she needed a temporary license. She'd been calling for days, weeks in fact, to try to get a hold of a live person at the licensing office. Nobody would answer. So 
my nurse practitioner picked up the phone the first day she got here and immediately got somebody. The next day they went to get a temporary license. She walked up, they wouldn't let her see the lady, but finally the lady just miraculously showed up and said, come back with me. Oh, you don't need a temporary license, here's your real one. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So that's what God's doing. There's many, many more. Uh, tomorrow, we start operating one to nine every day. So the one to nine is designed not to compete with your local doctor, but to be available for when you get off work. So that's why we're there, and holidays and weekends, seven days a week. And uh, we just look forward to treating this community, but also we need the support of others coming in in times of emergency so that we can have the funds that we need to take care of those who don't have as much. So pray for our team, for unity, yeah. clarity, and some of them need a little supernatural impartation to be able to do their job, because some of these jobs they haven't done before, and it's a bit difficult doing computer work that you've not done before. So thank you and bless you as a church. Would you just lead us up in a, in a quick prayer? Okay. So Lord, Father, yeah. we just thank you thank that you. you brought us this far, and you didn't bring us this far to let us stumble and fall. Yeah. So Lord, we want to be a light to the nations around us. This place is full of nations. So we want to be a light to the nations, and we can't be that unless as a team we're unified and the light of Christ is coming through us. So whatever worries and fears and troubles the team might think they have, tomorrow, Lord, let your grace and your glory fall upon them and let them be unity like John 17, like they've never known, yeah. and let them bring a witness into this community. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Dr. Bob. And Aaron, Aaron Evangelista, who's in school in Connecticut, uh, was a big part of actually a year ago when we were just dreaming, could this happen? And it was Erin's faith that kept that connection and gathered people, and she's going to Tanzania. Okay, so Erin's going to be back. She's only going to be back for one week in June, and then we're going to be shifting her, sh sending her out, and so there's not going to be a lot of time. So we want to give you warning now so that you can be praying and thinking and getting ready and thinking if you can support her, how you can come alongside. She's going for six weeks with our denominational team there. So uh, just remember to pray for Aaron as you pray for the clinic as well. Yeah, Lots exciting. going on. Exciting. Yeah. Let us continue to focus upon our Lord as we have our children's moment. The children, come on up. Wow, thank you. That's beautiful. The one I just gave me a, a picture of an elephant and a bunny and a lion and a hawk. Wow, it must be like around the throne room of God, worshiping him. When you think, in, in our church, we have a couple things that we always put on for people to see. And one of those, do you know what this is up here? Do you know what that is up there? What is it? It's a map. What, a map of what? of the whole world and we're right in the middle of the pacific ocean there are those little tiny dots of islands and we have a map because there was a missionary and he was one of the first missionaries to begin what we call the modern missionary movement in the same time just before the missionaries came here to hawaii nobody thought it was important to send missionaries to tell people about jesus they said, you know what? If God wants those people to know about Jesus, God will save them. But we're not going to go. Think that's a very good attitude? No. no, I don't think that's a very good attitude. And this man said, you know what you need? If you want to be a missionary, you need two things. You need an open Bible and you need an open map. So we have those two things. Point to see where you see a Bible. Bible, there's some Bible, I've put a whole bunch of Bibles here. There's children's Bibles and other kinds of Bibles. Actually over here. And, and also we have an open Bible up here all the time. Because if you want to be a missionary, if you want God to use you in other places, two things you need. 
You need to know the Word of God. You have to have that Bible open so it's with you and in your heart all the time. So the second thing you need is you need an open... You need open what? Come on, say it with me. You know what that means? It says, God, not only am I ready to listen to what you tell me, I'm ready to go anywhere on this map. Whoa. 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 Let's try that one again. We're going to listen to God and what he says in his word, and then we're going to go where? Anywhere on this map for Jesus. And that's what it means to follow Jesus as a servant. So let's pray, okay? I'll pray and you can pray after me. Dear Jesus, Jesus. we open our Bibles Bibles. to listen to you. you. And we look at the map map. that we will be willing willing. to go anywhere anywhere. on on this map for you. We want to tell others others. about Jesus. Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. All right, thanks so much. Good morning, family. This is the time we're going to join to pray. So will you please join with me as we enter the throne room? Jesus, we want to thank you so much for what you've done for us on the cross, which enables us to take our petitions directly to the Father. You've washed us in your blood and made us clean, so we're able to come to the throne of God, the throne of grace. You've made a way for us to be ushered directly into the presence of God, and we say, holy, holy, holy are you, God. Today we stand in awe of you and of the opportunity we're given to enter into your courts, and may we never, ever take that privilege for granted. Father, we're so appreciative that no matter where we are in our walk with you, whether we're a seasoned saint, someone who has known you for only a short time, or someone who may be sitting here and has not yet yielded their heart but is still searching, your your ear is always attuned to the cries of of our hearts, and we never hear from you that we're too busy or that you don't have time for us, or that access is denied. We always have a way right into your presence. Today, the cry of our heart is one of desperation. God, we're desperate for more of you, more of your presence, desperate for a new wind of the Spirit to visit us today. We want to see more of you. We want to see your face. There's nothing like your presence, and we yearn for more of it. Lord, there's healing that comes with your presence, and today we lift those amongst the body who may need a a healing touch from you, whether it be in their bodies or in their heart. We especially think now of those who have had their loved ones move on to glory. Will you surround them with your peace and cover them with your love? And for those who may be dealing with a physical issue, we declare restoration and wholeness over them so that they will be better than before. We also want to petition for you to change our hearts to be more like you, God. We want to see each other in our ohana as you see us. You've created us all in a unique way. We want to be more sensitive to the needs of others in our family. You have a plan for each of us, whether we have an outgoing personality or we tend to be a little more shy, whether we're bold or timid. You can use us where we're at as long as our heart is open to you. May all of our hearts be open to the leading of the Spirit of God so we bring glory and honor to your name. Help us to be compassionate, to have much grace for those who are different than us. Help us to reach out and minister to the downtrodden around us, to the one who may be disadvantaged, helpless, homeless, imprisoned, depressed, or oppressed. May our heartbeat match your heartbeat for these. May our hands be your hands and our feet be your feet. By doing this, we can show the world the love of God. Father, we thank you for every heart that has responded to the call of missionary. This is a season when, when, when many will be taking time to rest and regroup. We ask that you refresh and revive them. Give them favor with you and with man, and may this be their best year ever of receiving support from churches and the family so they can go back to win souls for the kingdom. We thank you for every member of a military home. They individually make a sacrifice to serve this great, la- this great nation. 
as this is the time of reassignments for many, we ask that you be with those who are coming and those who are leaving. May they each feel your hand of protection on them. We ask that you guide, protect, and bless each one by supplying every need they have from housing to a church family. Help them find their way in the new area they're in and find the right fit in their new surroundings. Finally, Lord, we're waiting with expectancy for you to unleash a great move of your presence on this place. We know you're searching for a pure, clean bride, and we say, Lord, forgive the sins of our nation. We repent and ask you to heal our land. Holy Spirit, come because we need you. We need you to touch all in authority in our government, from the youngest to the oldest, from the police chief to the president. Move in their hearts so that your plan will be accomplished across this nation. Your love is the only remedy for the problems we face here in America and across this world. Come, Holy Spirit, come and bring restoration to this nation. In your mighty name, amen. This is a time now when we reflect and think about what you've given us, Lord. You've given us so much. And it's a time in the week where we can give back. <clears throat> and this morning I'm reflective of those who've been attending here who are thinking about membership. Maybe it's the time to make a deeper commitment to give lives here on a more consistent basis. Not just to be a visitor, not just to be a guest. Pray. We pray for those with talents that have been giving, uh, talents and time. And, and we just thank you, Lord, and we pray from your spirit of giving to us that we'll continue to give our talents and time. And of course, we have tithes, Lord. We have our treasures uh, that you've offered to us through work, through, through gifts from others. And touch our heart, Lord, that we can, we can give. We're made in your image and not because of compulsion, not because we have to, not even because we're told to, Lord, but can we just give because we behold you in our hearts. We call forward the ushers to collect these givings. We pray that they'll be used well, so well for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.
Please join me as we read um, in scripture. This is the word of the Lord. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have his hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Amen. Let's rise as we continue in our worship. strength to face the day. 
save us. Lord, we need your spirit to come and touch. Lord, open up our Bibles. God, speak to us now. Lord, open up the map. Lord, that the dreams you put in our hearts, Lord, that you may make them come into reality as we go and literally touch everywhere in the world for you. And God, open up our hearts right now. We love you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen. You may be seated. Whew. Thank you so much, Lane and team. And this is our time every, every week and every day. And I hope every hour in your life is for mission. That's why we live and breathe. It's, we live for the Lord, we live to share the word of the gospel. But you know, it, it doesn't always appear that way. Um, there were thousands of churches gathered at one time in Europe, and they had made something called the Lausanne Covenant. And they declared, they made this statement under God. They said, a church that is not a missionary church is contradicting itself and is strangling the Holy Spirit. And that's not only true for a church, it's true for a family, it's true for an individual, it's true for all of us. We, we are here, we live in order that we may proclaim the saving power of Jesus Christ because there is a world that desperately, desperately needs saving. So whenever I look at the map, I, that there, the map is there not only for you to pray for missionaries, it's there to say, God, where do you want to send me? And ask that question and Literally, you know, we have people right now in all of the corners of that map. And we're asking the Lord, Lord, how can you send us out more? And so we have Aaron that's going to go to Tanzania. That's just on the, the right-hand side, the east side of Africa there, down by Madagascar. She's leaving. We have Carl in Nepal. Just look at those mountains just a little bit to the, to the right of India there. We have our team in Japan right now. And we have, we have people that are ready to go out to the Philippines and preparing to go soon. And that's, that's just short term. <laughs> Long term, we have partnerships in the Middle East and in Africa and in Asia and in New Zealand and in the South Pacific and in the mainland and in Europe. 
as it's our prayer that the gospel and the word, the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ will literally cover this globe. You know, someone once said that God, every generation, calls enough people so that the whole world can hear about Jesus. The problem is not with the call. The problem with is those who are willing to follow. So we want to look at this missionary story in 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And it, it's, it's a letter that Paul wrote to believers after one of his missionary journeys into Macedonia. And Thessaloniki is the capital of Macedonia that Alexander the Great made it his capital when he took over the world. And Paul, the gospel went and penetrated into the very heart of that city. So we're reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Open your Bibles with me. You'll want to have it open. Verse 13. I'll be reading down to the end of chapter 16. As we see this heart of God reaching out to touch the world. Paul said, we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. For you, brothers and sisters, became imitators of God's churches in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. And you suffered from your own people the same things those churches suffered from the Jews who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and also drove us out. They displeased God and are hostile to everyone in their effort to keep us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved. In this way, they always heap up their sins to the limit. The wrath of God has come upon them at last. Mission serious stuff. It's powerful in the word of God, powerful to save and to change. So we cry out Hosanna. But it's warfare in that God is longing for every person all around the world to know the saving truth of the love of Jesus Christ, to know that sin can be forgiven by his blood, to know that Jesus rose from the grave and is alive now in power and that we can serve him, the one true and living God. Let's read again verse 13. Read this together with me, please. When you received the word of God. Now, what did they receive? The word of God. Let's try it again. When you received the word of God, you accepted it, not as a human word, but as it actually is, the word of God. Paul brought the word of God to them. It comes through human mouths. God chooses to use us. But the word and the message of the gospel is not from us. It's from God. And so often, we have taken the whole story of the message of the Old Testament and of the New Testament of the saving power of God that's so holistic to transform all of our lives and to transform families and even nations, and we've turned it into just a message of an entry point into the kingdom. Now, we need to enter the kingdom. That comes when we say yes to Jesus. That comes when we turn and repent and we say, Lord, forgive us our sins. But that's just the entry point. You see, God wants us to grow in his kingdom and to grow in relationship with him and each other so that we can be sent out in his name around the world. So last week we talked about how missions means giving. And today we see how missions means growing. What's your dream? I love to ask children what their dreams are. Sometimes they're dreams you have at night, but these kinds of dreams are often dreams that are, 
that are tucked in your heart. I love to ask young people, what, what's your dream to change the world? And then you take that dream and you look up at that map and you say, God, where in the corner of the world is that dream going to take me? Because Jesus Christ, he plants a dream in your heart, not just for yourself, but a dream that, that he can use you and he can use me to bring the truth of his word to change someone else's life. And we may have people right here this morning who will change whole countries. We may have people that will change whole regions in the name and the power of Jesus Christ. Is God that big? <laughs> William Carey, we're going to meet him again later on. He said, expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. Can we say that? Expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. Jesus, who rose again from the grave, <laughs> his arm is not too short to use you and to use me for his kingdom. So if that's going to happen, what we see in Thessalonians chapter 2 needs to happen in our lives. It says in verse 13, Paul was so grateful because he was continually grateful because they received the word of God. And if you're a parent and you have children, it's a big deal bringing children into this world. And, and we just are praising uh, for a new little baby. And we got a whole bunch of babies on their way here. <laughs> Praise God. And this beautiful little baby, as, as we look at, at what God can do and create a new little life, he can also make any life new. Jesus says you must be born Again, And that happens when there is this receiving of the word of God. And when we recognize this is God speaking. This isn't just someone's opinion. This just isn't a person. This is God. And as a parent, there's nothing that will make you more thankful when you look at bringing a new little life into the world than recognizing that they are growing in the word of God. And they are listening to the word of God. And they are obeying the word of God. Because if your children are there, they're safe. If your children are there, it will give you so much joy. And parents, that we can trust that as we send our children out into the schools, into the world, into the communities, our number one prayer is that they will be rooted in the word of God. And so pray for Karen Maluo as she heads up our school. And pray for her that from the very beginning, pray for those who work in our nursery, pray for those in our Sunday schools, that they will be rooted in the word of God. So we receive and plant the word of God in our hearts. Let's read the first part of our mission. This is a review from last week. Our mission is to give ourselves. Let's try it again. Our mission is to give ourselves to God in whole hearted worship. So the beginning of receiving the word comes in the context of worship. Now you'll notice if you're new to our church, um, we, we do a lot of things out of scripture. We read scripture. We have it all through our, our worship. Praise God for Lane, who understands that, that worship's to be uh, centered around the word of God, what we sing and what we say. We do a lot of praying in our church. We pray for people. And in those prayers, we want to take what is in the heart of God, in his word, and we want to receive it and push it out into people's lives and push it around the world through prayer. So worship, giving ourselves wholeheartedly to worship is the, the context in which we receive the word. And so thank you for coming, coming today to receive the word. Now we come, we need to be very careful what we plant in our hearts. And the reason worship is so central for us is that our hearts are very easily turned to the side. Our very hearts are very easily misled. You know, when you're a little child, you're very gullible. You can believe a lie really easily. And Satan is out there lying and accusing. And we're in a culture with all kinds of lies, all kinds of traps to try to destroy our children, to destroy 
to destroy our lives. We need to be careful what we put in our hearts. Some people, you know, our hearts are, are very easily susceptible to being offended. And when we get offended, we cut off our hearts. We say, I'm not going to trust anyone else. I'm not going to forgive. I'm not going to love. But relationships are meant to have the word of God at the center. My mom, uh, again, I said she's turning 90. And um, one thing mom always told me growing up, John, don't give your heart to anybody. Do not give your heart. Do not trust your heart to anybody. Don't trust your heart to another girl. Not until that ring is on your finger. When that ring is on your finger and you come underneath the covenant of Jesus and the promise of Jesus, then you have the safety to trust your heart to that girl. And then she would always add this as every mom does. And never trust your body to any girl till you've given her your heart underneath the covenant of Jesus. You see, you don't want to give your body to someone until you've given them your heart. And you don't want to give them the heart until you've given it all before the Lord Jesus in holiness and in his grace. And that's how God has designed to protect our hearts. And so that his word can, can grow. And it begins, be careful what you plant in your heart. Plant the word of God there. Plant the truth of God there. And it will guard you and keep you and bless you. So the word is received. We need to be careful that we plant the word. There's all kinds of other things wanting to get into your heart, but we also want to recognize the power of listening. There's power when you listen to the word. There's power when you receive the word of God into your life. Back to 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. We also thank God continually because when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as it actually is, the word of God. The word is heard. How does it get from out there into our hearts? We need to hear it with our ears. And that's true. There's all kinds of ways. Music is a wonderful way. To hear the word of God. Read the word of God. My dad, he had a stroke, and, and for 12 years, he, he was semi-blind and couldn't read himself. And, and mom would read the word of God to him. And because he'd memorized so much of it, she would pause, and he'd fill in the blanks. And then they'd keep going and pause and fill in the blank. That is a great exercise for you to know the word of God. Have someone read it. Do you read the word of God together, husbands, with your wives? Wives, do you read the word of God for your husbands? Parents, do you read the word of God together with your children? Grandparents, do you read the word of God with your great-grandchildren and with your grandchildren? You see, the word of God is meant to be read. We have a Sunday school class in Revelation. It's meant to be read from start to finish. Pastor Clive's doing, doing a class on John. We're doing a class on Joseph in Genesis. You know what? You can also listen to the word of God on your phone. Put in your earbuds. When you're, when you're driving in the car, when you're walking on the street, when you're, when you're at work at home and doing the dishes, whatever you're doing, listen to the word of God. That's when you can hear vast sections of scripture. You can listen to all of Revelation just in one sitting. Listen to the whole gospel of John. If you're working out in the gym, you've got a long workout. It's amazing what God can do as you listen to the word. There's power when you listen to the word of God. It sits in there. When you're in your deathbed, when you're in your deathbed, what will come to your mind? It will be the things that God has planted in your heart. And I've seen people with dementia, and I've seen people with all kinds of, of, of things in old age, and they can't remember their own name, but you start reading them the word of God that they have learned. The Lord is my, I shall not. And all of a sudden, they smile. It comes back. The word of God is powerful. It will not leave you. Every other thing you plant in your heart, it will be temporary. But the word of, the God, of, of God endures forever. 
And when you plant it in your heart, it is there forever. And you can trust it to work. My brother, black sheep of the family, Billy. Many of you know Billy. Billy rebelled if you could ever rebel. And, and he rebelled and he turned away from the Lord and it broke my parents' hearts. But you know what? The word was placed in his heart from when he was before he could walk. And God stirred his heart and brought that word back. Boy, he's a man of God. He is a powerful man of God. Because God brought him back to the power of his word that was put in his heart. Do not diminish the importance. Parents, get your kids into the word. Not just in Sunday school, but at home. Sunday school is great. And parents, be in the word because you can't give what you don't have. And so the power of God at work in you, they received the word, it was planted in their hearts. But secondly, they believed. And, and this word needs to not only be received, it needs to grow in, in our lives. Again, in Thessalonians, if you go back to verse 13, we thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as a human word, but as it actually is the word of God, which indeed is at work, where? In you. You see, when, when the word of God comes into your heart, it, it, it begins working. God's word, it's alive. It begins working. Changing you, penetrating your heart, showing sin. Begins working, giving you courage. It begins working, changing your personality to become like Jesus. It begins working, taking away the fear. It begins working, giving you understanding and knowledge of the things of God and the wisdom and how to apply it in this world. And so there is this working of God. Be, be very careful when you open the Bible. Because what's in there is going to come into your life and it's going to change you. It's powerful. Don't underestimate what God will do. And so our mission is to grow in the knowledge of Christ and of our love for others. Can we read that together? Our mission is to grow in our knowledge of Christ and in our love for one another. So in our relationship with God, it's not just a beginning point. We want to grow in our relationship with God. That's our motto as a church, loving God and loving people, okay? So then we also want to grow in our love for each other. This is how the Spirit of God and the Word of God works. And as a church, we are committed to equipping us together in the Word of God. That's why we have two new associate pastors. Pastor John, he's working with, with our Ohanas and we're working with our Japanese. He's trained in the Word of God. We have Pastor Clyde who has a passion to teach the word of God, not just so you know it, but you can grow in your relationship with Jesus. Any of you have been in one of his classes, you know he's going to challenge you in your relationship with God, in your relationship with people. What's the word telling you? And so we are growing and being equipped. To do that, we have to develop the conditions for growth. The conditions for growth. Now, many of you, um, I pray, want to go on short-term missions. And, and, and I pray. Our, our prayer is that every single person in our church will get out there, cross-culturally, even for a short term, to be used by God and to learn from God about cross-cultural mission. And so right now, we've got our team in Japan. We've got our team in Nepal. Aaron will be going to Tanzania. We've got the Uaharas. They're going to be going to the Philippines. And I, I, I know I'm missing some others. And, and we are constantly sending people out. Some of you may want to go on long-term mission. And you say, hey, Pastor, I'm interested in, in, in becoming a missionary. What, what's it mean? Well, whether you're short-term or long-term, or whether you want to be used in evangelism, you need to get rooted in the Word of God. So you say to me, I want to go on short-term missions. I say, fine, what are you memorizing in Scripture? Where are you studying? Because that's... You've got to get the word into your heart so it's alive in you wherever you go. And we develop these conditions for growth. People come to me for counseling, and praise God, I love, I love it when they call. 
And pastor, we've got this problem in, in, in raising our children. What do we do? Pastor, we've got this problem in our marriage. What do we do? And praise God. But most of the time, this very situations they're looking for, I say, well, were, were you in that Sunday school class? No, I don't go to Sunday school. I, you know, we, we just finished covering all that stuff in Scripture. Or you say, were, were you in church two weeks ago? You remember that passage? No, I wasn't. There. Well, well, you know what? We were covering all that stuff because the things in the Word of God apply to all of your needs and relationships. And so we have to realize that when we receive the Word and we, be, and we believe, we start growing in applying the Word in our relationships. Now, some of you know every MM, MMA fighter out there. I would ask who are your favorite fighters. You would say, hey, this guy and this guy. Some of you don't know MMA. That's cool. Some of you are into basketball. You can do all the basketball stuff. Um, but we know all these kinds of dynamics in the secular realm. But, you know, without the word of God, we're not ready to step into any ring at all. We're not even ready to step out for any contest. And you get punched by opposition of someone who doesn't agree with your world value. Or you get kicked when someone close to you dies and you don't know how to respond. Or you get leveled by temptation and by pornography and you don't know how to get back up again. Or you get in a chokehold from someone else because you're addicted in some way. And we need the word of God alive and powerful in us and working through us for all of the realistic stuff. Or you have someone who won't forgive you. Or someone that you need to forgive. All of these, the word of God and so much more comes and works. But it begins with developing a condition of growth. I want to say these things. It's in your notes if you have it. It says discipline. Can we say that? Discipline leads us to desire, which matures into delight. Let's read it together. Discipline leads us to desire, which matures to delight. You say, I don't like reading my Bible. I don't want to read my Bible. Well, that's when it comes to discipline. Because you know what? I don't like working out, and I don't like eating healthy sometimes. But when I do it, what happens is that discipline begins to lead us into desire. You know, sometimes you don't feel like loving your kids. Sometimes you don't feel like loving your parents. But when you do what is right, the word alive in your heart changes your desire so that you want to do what is good. And then as that desire matures, it becomes delight. You know, I, I find it really difficult. I, I'll just be honest. I, I, I can't get why someone wouldn't rush to worship. It, it, it's, it's really beyond my, my thinking and my experience that, that someone would not drop everything in their life to go and worship Almighty God with his people. Because that discipline which was formed in my life became the greatest desire of my heart. I want people to meet God. And that desire, as it matures, it becomes delight. And that's true in terms of prayer. That's true in terms of reading scripture. That's true in areas of worship. That's true in any area of sharing your faith. As we create and develop a context of discipline where we do what is right in the word of God, it will change your desire and it will create a whole new area of delight in your life. The word to grow in us, it's believed, but then it needs to be practiced in our relationships. Missions is all about relationship. God reaching out for relationship with you and with me. It's been said that if you were to take mission out of the Bible, you'd be left with only the cover. The whole thing is about mission. God reaching out in his love for you. And, and all of scripture is about relationship, relationship with God, and then this relationship, the power of the word, and each other. You know, the greatest problem you'll have, you want to go on the mission field, the greatest problem missionaries have is in their marriages. 
because we're used to resolving issues and living in a, in, in a cultural context. You take away that cultural context, all of the things that normally provide security and safety are pulled out, and there's incredible stress on the relationship and on the marriage. Number one issue you have when you're a personnel person for a mission organization is the marriages of the missionaries. I remember one missionary, they came over. They were uh, brand new on the field, but they'd been married 35 years, seasoned, godly pastor and wife, godly, godly pastor and wife. They'd been there only a few months, and they separated. They couldn't cope with the stress. All of their coping mechanisms had been removed. And they came, got on their knees before God, and, and they, they sought the Lord, and, they, and God brought them back and healed them. But the stress on the relationship that comes in mission is tremendous. The second number one stress that you have on the mission field, this is so you can pray for missionaries. The second number one stress that you have is relationships between missionaries. And how do you get missionaries working together as a team? You know, Commander Jake, I, I, I just can't imagine having all those guys on a submarine and getting them to work as a team. And it's, it's true whether you're in the military, it's true when you're in the army of God on the mission field. Getting people to work together. And you may have those kinds of issues in your own home. And God has given us the word of God, which is more powerful than our sin, to bring unity and to build team in the name of Jesus. How do I love this person? How do I help? How do I have patience? How do I be kind? The word of God at work within us. Remember William Carey, what did he say? Two things you need as a missionary. You need an open, an open Bible, and you need an open map so you can say, God, I'll go anywhere, anywhere on that map for you. And, if, and you start, when you start reading your Bible, you start by saying that. Lord, I'll go anywhere for you. So there is this practicing of the word in relationships. William Carey, um, you may know about him. He's called the father of modern missions. Um, he wasn't some great academic or great preacher at the beginning. <laughs> he was a, a cobbler. He made shoes. He fixed shoes. And in fact, he was so poor when his dad died and he took over the business they were so poor that they couldn't get help. Their two-year-old son died. But William Carey, in the midst of his serving and doing, making his shoes, he taught himself how to read New Testament Greek. He was so disciplined and committed to the word of God, he wanted to read it in the original language. Then he taught, he had no one to teach him. Then he taught himself Hebrew. Then he taught himself Latin. And William Carey, he said, I'm just a normal plotter. I'm just a plotter. Remember what he said. Expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. That was his first sermon when he, he started the Missionary Society in Britain. And he was challenging people who said, ah, God can save them themselves. We don't have to go. And William Carey was committed and passionate that the Great Commission applied to every believer everywhere in the world an open Bible and an open map to be God's hands and feet to win the world for Christ. So we have to receive the word. We have to let the word grow in us as we expose ourselves and listen and worship and practice it in our relationships. And finally, the word, it has to be conceived in our lives. In other words, what is born in us needs to now bear fruit in the lives of other people as we grow to become like Jesus. Let's read our mission again. Our mission is to go, let's try it again. Our mission is to go by the power of the Holy Spirit as we bless the church and bring hope to the world. So our success as a church will not be measured by how many people are in the pews or how many people come. Our success will be measured by how many people we send out in the name of Jesus to touch the world for him. Amen?
Amen? Okay, so here, again, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, back to verse 14. It says, For you, brothers and sisters, became imitators of God's churches in Judea, which are in Christ. You suffered from your own people the same things those churches suffered from the Jews, who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and also drove us out. If we are, this word is going to conceive and reproduce in our lives as we go out to tell other people about Christ. It begins at home. And the, those in the, uh, the believers, they started sharing Christ and they found that they found opposition and, and difficulty to the point where there was suffering. Are you ready to follow Jesus? Are you ready to take the word that you've received and the salvation that you have and are you ready to take it to share it to someone else? Missions means giving. Missions means growing. Missions means suffering. How is it that we grow? <laughs> we grow when we suffer. We don't suffer, we don't grow. It still bothers me sometimes when people say everyone's a missionary. Well, no, everyone's not a missionary. Everyone's an evangelist. Everyone can be used by God powerfully to share, but not everyone's a missionary. Not everyone has left their home and left everything they have and gone across into another culture and said goodbye to the old world, learned a new language, and said, I'm willing to die for you, Jesus. And you, you, you know you're a missionary when you've shed blood, your own blood. You know you're a missionary when you've tasted suffering for the sake of Jesus, not just because you got some sickness. And so it was for the, those in the city of Thessaloniki. They were imitating God's churches. Why? Because the churches in Judea around Jerusalem, they were opposed by the Jews, and they were persecuted by them. Now those in, in Greece, they were Gentiles. They, they weren't Jews, but they were opposed by their own people. And often the first difficulty of following Jesus is opposition from our families. It's opposition from those we work with, opposition from those we love the most. And it doesn't matter if we keep our mouths shut or if we open them, just the fact that we've taken a step for Jesus can sometimes cause opposition. And so there is this, this need. Leadership is a willingness to stand up under fire and to move forward in the name of Jesus, but to keep our focus and our passion. So there's imitation of the churches and imitations of God, missionaries, God's missionaries who were rejected. It says in chapter 2 that they were imitating the churches that had planted them, but also they were imitating the prophets and the apostle Paul who was driven out. William Carey, he's this great missionary hero, but life was not easy for him. You know, he went to Calcutta in 1800, about 20 years before the missionaries came to Hawaii. And when, when he went, he had no support. One of the two missionaries that he went with as a team of three deserted them very quickly and left them alone. And he wrote in his journal, I'm in a strange land. He was regretting having gone on the mission field. I have no Christian friends. I have a large family and nothing to supply our wants. He was so discouraged. And then he said, well, I have God. And God's word is sure. He got malaria. His five-year-old son got dysentery and died. His wife became mentally ill. There was so much stress. She couldn't cope. They had to move from, from place to place to try to find work to support the ministry. She became delusional. At one point, she attacked him with a knife and tried to kill him. At another point, she, she was delusional, thinking he was committing adultery with people. She became so mentally ill, they actually had to remove her. Can you imagine the anguish in this man's heart who'd left everything, and the love of his life was in such a condition. The suffering on the mission field is real. And seven years, he worked and he labored. Seven years and not one convert. 
And then finally, the first convert who was baptized, it's his name, Krishna Pal. William Carey, he translated the Bible into 36 different languages and dialects. He started social, social movements against the killing of children. Sound familiar? Because in that culture, there was infanticide. They would kill the children. He started movements against widows. When their husbands died, there was a tradition. They would burn themselves and kill themselves. He started a movement against assisted suicide. Somehow, we're not that progressive, are we, in Hawaii? Because the gospel of God to know Jesus means it changes how we live. And we imitate the Lord Jesus even in his death. Last week we celebrated the Holocaust. We remember the Holocaust and all those millions and millions of people killed in World War II. And Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who lived through that in Germany, he said that when Christ calls a man, when he calls a woman, he bids him to come and die. See, going out in the mission field is not because life is going to be easier, not because life is going to be, be better, but it's because that's where we find life in Jesus. And the power of the word released. I wrote this, this quote. It says, never pity missionaries. This is from Robert Shannon. Never pity missionaries, envy them. Because they are where the real action is. Where life and death, where sin and grace, where heaven and hell, where they converge. Is that where your life is? The convergence of life and death, of sin and grace, of heaven and hell. And the Lord Jesus wants to send us out. Ready to stand? Take your Bible. You can open it. What did William Carey say? And open. Come on, get a Bible. Grab one. Open Bible. It's supposed to be open. Why is it supposed to be open? So you read it. Why? So you receive it. So you believe it. So you live it. An open what? An open Bible and an open, why an open map? So that when you're reading this Bible, you're saying, God, I will take what it says and I will go anywhere on that map. Is that you? You may want to take the Bible. <laughs> Some of you know that you haven't been eating it and drinking and sleeping it. You may want to put your hand on it and say, Lord, I need to receive your word. I need to get it in my heart. If you don't have... You may have your phone. You can put your phone on your heart. That's okay. <laughs> but the word of God, okay? But then there's the open map. And God may be calling some of you to go short term. He may be putting in your heart long term. There's a whole world out there. We talk about the second coming of Jesus. Most of the world have never heard about the first coming of Jesus. And they're stuck. They don't know there's forgiveness of sins. They don't know there's a better way. And the Lord Jesus says, even as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Go in my name. Father, we, we hold your word. We hold it open. God, that you would open our hearts and that your word would be received in our hearts, not as the word of men, but as your word to speak to us and to bring life. And thank you, God, that your word, it comes and it works in our hearts, and it changes us, and it makes us new, it makes us like Jesus. Father, we commit ourselves, Lord, to learn your word. It's alive, it's active, that we can share your word with those who don't know you. And Father, we, we hold up our lives and we look at that map and we say, God, anywhere, anywhere on that map, 
God, who would have ever thought you'd come into the middle of the Pacific Ocean and now, God, send us out. There's a whole world. If there's anyone here, there's a stirring in your heart to say, God, I want to go anywhere on that map. Lord, I'm here. I'm here, but Lord, in the same way that you came to me, Lord, send me out and use me to go in your name. You just put up your hand and just say, Lord, I'm here. You use me. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Here am I. Praise God. Here am I, Lord. You send me. And Lord, we love you. We thank you for learning this passage of the Thessalonians. And God, may your word work miracles and great things in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said.
God, use us. Lord, thank you that you promised to work in us, but Lord, use us. <laughs> Lord, thank you that you promised to forgive us and to empower us, but Lord, use us. Lord, thank you that you clear the way in front of us and you provide for us, but Lord, use us. And Lord, let every person here today, Father, be used by you to touch another life in the name of Jesus. Father, bless us and keep us. Lord, make your face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. Lord, lift up the light of your face, your countenance, and give us your peace, both now and forevermore. And everyone said, God bless you.